Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great. And in this video, I will start installing the electronics in the Airbus 350. And as I mentioned before, that I will be using some high quality parts in this airplane because it deserves some really high quality parts. And luckily we got the best in the market. I will show you that later in the video. But now let's start working because I'm so excited. This is my favorite part. And so let's get to work. Look at this. It's like paper. What the hell? Like the whole fuselage because it's all as one piece is really strong and amazing. Like when you take this out, oh my goodness, like, like this is very strong, but like this, I have to reinforce the whole thing inside. This hatch door is amazing. Strength is unbelievable. It's crazy and super light. It's super light. I just added five millimeters Dibron and I sanded the edges around 45 degrees and that gives it really good, good strength. And so and I made those two cuts in here for the locks and I will be using four hinges so the door will open like this down and yeah very happy with this it's so cool Right, the horizontal stabilizers are finally finished and attached and I'm so happy with the results uh, there are two carbon fiber rods in here that hold them together plus this also a small carbon fiber that I made it here just a small piece of carbon 
and this thing is just to lock the LED, the the horizontal stabilizer in place with one screw and the connector is here and this thing is looking so strong and it's just rock solid it's, it's perfect i'm so happy with it and with the finish everything is smooth and clean very happy with this now i have to make the connectors uh, that goes in the main fuselage uh, for three servos plus the strobe light at the tail and uh, yeah this video is sponsored by pcb way pcb way is a full feature custom pcb prototyping service and if you are like me who loves electronics then pcb way is the place to go go to bcbway.com to learn more I think I did a good job. These are the cables, and I use this uh, 3M tape. It's it's double face, but like this, it's so good. And these wires will never go loose. And this is the main connector for the servos, and this red one here is for the light at the tail. All right, I think we are done here. The tail is ready. Very nice. All right, I think I will start uh, preparing the electronics, uh, the brain of the airplane. And as I mentioned in the previous video that I will be using some top quality uh, parts in this airplane. And so let me show you uh, what I will be using. So I will be flying the airplane using a jetty system and the uh, jetty is one of the best in the market this is the central box 400 and this thing is a beast 24 channels this will be like the main the brain of the airplane everything will be connected directly in here and i'm so excited to start installing this one and uh, i also got the this beauty this is the ds24 this transmitter is dual band that means it can run in two frequencies 2.4 GHz and 900 MHz. This is like a backup frequency, which is awesome. And uh, this thing is a beauty. Look at it. It's very cool. Already registered my A350. <laughs> I'm so excited to install uh, this system. And I have two uh, batteries. Uh, these are, uh, each one is at a 5000 milliamps. So there will be two batteries connected here. That means I have 10,000 milliamps batteries. This is just for the, 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 the system, which is the servos and the controls, not the ADFs. The ADFs will have separate batteries. This is the lighting system. It's nothing special, just whatever. It's fine. That's the controller. And this is the retract controller also from... Uh, it's very old. This one from my uh, from the Dreamliner. This is the only part that I'm using from the Dreamliner. It still works. And yeah, these are... Uh, I made this myself. I will be uh, installing one is for the batteries and the other one is for the electronics. Uh, it's uh, three millimeters uh, plywood covered with carbon both sides. And here uh, this thing is solid gyro. I will be also installing this on the A350. And now I have to cover the whole plate with masking tape and start drawing and drilling and cutting for all the servos, all the cables and the screws and then I glue this uh, inside the fuselage and install the electronics on top of it later that's the part that I love the most but this is awesome and this man
all right everything is looking great inside here and it's very strong I'm so pleased with this uh, these are the batteries will go here and all the electronics here and this made the whole structure so strong these are the hinges for the hatch and that's the hatch the locks are awesome so happy with it yeah I would say this is my best work so far so the next step is to uh, prepare the main connectors for the wings they will come out of here plus another connector here and uh, yeah maybe start adding the, the wires inside These are the wings main connectors, they look so good, I'm loving this. Uh, change of plans, I was planning to install the AC inside the fuselage and turned out it's a bad idea because these three wires they have to go outside this hole and in this case the AC have to go deep and then there will be no, not enough air to cool it, I'd like it to be flash like this and I have to add some extensions to it so this would be so many things and I heard that it's not good to have this long wire from the motor to the ASC it's more preferred to have the shortest possible between the ASC and the EDF and the batteries to the the wires to the batteries doesn't matter how long they are but between the motor and the ASC the shorter is better so I cut this I will shorten the wires, install the AC inside here and uh, make some, I don't know, air inlet somehow to get enough air inside and cool the AC and these two, the battery cables will go out of here directly to the batteries I mean, honestly it makes more sense like this so, let's get cutting and rewiring everything again so, three hours of digging and cutting and then, then then arranging stuff this cut is so small for the ASC and it's finally inside with two uh, wood brackets whatever inside with four screws this thing is 100% secured and now I have to cut the cables and solder them directly in here and this is how much I'm gonna cut which is good and to the battery and this is the signal yeah, that was a mess. I should have done this way before I close the wings. Anyways. I think until now I don't mention that I'm using the Castle ESCs. Uh, 160 amps and these ESCs. Uh, worth every single cent because they are uh, in my opinion the highest quality they're so amazing and uh, yeah they can run on 12s so I'm running my uh, A350 on 12s that means two batteries for each EDF uh, 26s and uh, so it means 12s to each bed to each uh, motor and I already checked the left wing I took it outside uh, after I connect everything and connect the batteries and I went full throttle on the ESC and it's flawless, it's amazing. And so now I have to do the same procedure here again and get this thing mounted. Great ESCs, very highly recommended, amazing. Just started installing the cables. This is coming from the nose to the center, and this is from the tail. Three cables, and I already made them myself. And yeah, they will go to the central box. Many more to go. 
So, let's keep going. All right, I decided not to use this. This thing is garbage. And I switched to this from Unilight. It's very good lighting system, sequencer. And yeah, it's much better. So, we'll install that. I am preparing the connectors for the wings. These are the lights and the landing gear. And because I changed the lighting squincer, I uh, the LEDs that I installed, uh, they can only handle 4 volts maximum, like 3.8 to, to 4 volts maximum, then they will burn. And the new squincer uh, runs the like the input just like the output. So 7.4 volts in, 7.4 volts out. And for that, I have to use those resistors to each LED. I hope I have enough. I already tried one resistor on an LED and it did not burn, it worked, so we're all good. I had to add this aluminium heatsink uh, on the resistors, here there are 5 resistors and these things really get hot and so I thought it's a better idea to add this to keep them cool at least. Alright, uh, we're done, these are all the connectors for the lighting system, all of it. Uh, these are all the resistors and this is also one resistor for the landing light and all the cables are protected with uh, electric tape very good very nice i made them so nicely let's go ahead and start installing all these This thing has four screws, two in here, two the other side. And because I'm so smart, um, I cannot reach the screws inside too. So I should have flipped it 90 degrees. Uh, okay, I just installed uh, the receivers and even the retracts. The nose is also attached and connected because before I uh, fix everything in place, I would like to make sure that all the connections are right and uh, especially the landing gear. And that's why now I'm trying to program the landing gear sequencer in here. So I program the doors with the gear, uh, with, the, with the right timing, with when, when the door opens and closes. And this procedure really takes so much time to program every channel with every servo, the nose, uh, doors and the main landing gear doors. I already programmed the main gear plus those two main doors and I think I did it right. And I have this free track just for testing. So gear up and doors closed. Again, gear down. Very nice, amazing. It's awesome. The squincer is really amazing in here. I'm loving it. And yeah, so. There are still those two small doors because the main doors plus the main nose gear doors are connected to one channel because they operate the same. They open, gear down, then they close. But there are two small doors. They have to stay open while the gear is down. So I have to add another squincer in here and program that. This will take a while. Looking good so far. All right, I've got the landing gear done with the squincer. Everything is so amazing. I will show you that later when I assemble the whole airplane. And uh, now uh, I will, this is the JTRC switch. And this thing is so amazing because I can turn on and off the airplane from my transmitter. So I don't need any physical switch in here. Well, from, the, from my radio, I can turn the whole airplane on and off. And this is so amazing. So let's put this. These are the main power connectors directly from the batteries. 
This one goes from the first battery to the central box and another lead goes to the uh, control, the retrax control box. And the second one is also from the second battery to the central box and uh, another connector goes to the lighting sequencer. And this center box has two power outputs and it's for powering a receiver or something like that and it's BEC output and that means uh, the voltage is exactly the same as the uh, servos output and that I set this one in here to 6 volts to power all my servos and the thing is I was thinking of uh, connecting like from the central box to the uh, to the landing gear sequencer and the lighting but I thought uh, this will draw more amps from the central box and I don't want to risk anything and so I thought I connected directly from the batteries and so the central box will only power the receivers and the servos. Okay, now I need to find out where to mount the satellites. These are the two 2.4 gigahertz. These they will go on top. I will keep everything outside the fuselage so no signal interference. It's everything is carbon in here. And so I still have to figure out if I have to keep the whole receiver outside or just the antennas outside. I don't know yet. And this one is the 900 megahertz with these two flat antennas. This is like a backup receiver. I'm thinking these they will go under the airplane somewhere. And I want to mount these outside somehow. I will need to do some re research to see what is the best direction how to mount them. But these they have to be also outside. And for the ones on top. I will 3D print like a housing for it that looks almost scale like the real thing and put them in here somehow. And for that I'm so sure we need longer cables. Okay, it's been an hour and now I managed to connect the flaps and the ailerons, the spoilers, all in here and I will have to connect the wings to make sure that everything is correct then I can remove these, these tapes where I wrote each individual one and I think that's it. I still have to get an extension cable for the main landing gear plus two extensions for the throttle which they will go to the speed controls and I think that's about it. All right, I blacked the wing. Let's try to turn it on for the first time. So I assigned the RC switch in here. So if I click, it tells me turn the model on. Yes. It's on. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> okay, it's on. Lights are on, perfect. Amazing. All right, let's see if I made everything correct. Aileron. I base it all. And my flaps are in the right knob. Beautiful. Spoilers. Ah, oh, they're working. All right, all the connections are perfect. Left wing, right wing. Rudders, two elevators to the back, LEDs, and these are the two receivers, 2.4 gigahertz connected to the Cortex Pro to the gyro, and from the gyro they are directly here uh, using serial connection. That's very good. It saves a lot of time. Just connect the receivers and the switch for the gyro mode, 
and it, it works and also you can access the settings of the gyro on your transmitter and I can adjust anything from from my transmitter and the nine, 900 uh, megahertz satellite is connected directly here I still have to put these somewhere and then continue working that's so clean I love it so nice So these things are the satellite's covers on the roof. Uh, I tried my best to make them as scale as possible like the real thing. The Airbus A350 has this and the tail. And I, I don't know what is the purpose. Is it for satellite things? Wi-Fi? Satellites? I think. I don't know. And a small one in the front. Now the big one will, will house the whole satellite inside, the whole receiver. And the one this goes in the front this will be just for the antennas one goes from here one goes out from this side and this one oh my god the bent is barely dry uh, this one one antenna goes from the back and one from the left and uh, they look they look good so let me show you how is the whole thing so they have to twist like this so one antenna goes here other one goes straight at 90 degrees mounted both of them and so my plan yeah the antennas won't look so nice outside the fuselage but that's my only way I don't want to risk losing signal so one goes like this one goes like this and I will just cover them cover them with the same coloring of the, the livery and hopefully we won't see them I mean we will see them but on the nose I kept the receiver inside and I took the antennas outside Something like this, with three screws, the other one with four screws, that looks good. Done. Batteries will never go anywhere. This is perfect. And here is the other side of the board and these are all the cables. I think I did a decent job on cable management. I tried my best to keep this area as flat as possible because the landing gear will go here and there is only around 15 millimeters clearance between the wheels and the board and this is the best i could do in here all the cables are secured this is the first antenna the 900 megahertz i kept it here hopefully the signal is fine and the other antenna i would put it outside somehow here after i finish delivery just make a small cut for the cable and just with double face keep this outside let me connect one wing and the tail and the elevator and show you everything in action because everything is working amazingly so happy with it i deserve to give myself some credit because i made this thing <laughs> so i assembled the left wing and i wish i have a bigger space to assemble the whole airplane and show you everything uh, but unfortunately i have a very small workshop so i barely managed to assemble one wing nose is already there and the tail is also assembled with the elevators and so i will turn the airplane on and check all the control surfaces the lights and the landing gear the nose landing gear i had to make the sequencer and uh, all by myself and it's working so nicely and uh, yeah so let's turn it on and to turn the airplane on it's on this switch turn the model on airbus a350 yes There you go, it's on.
and now the gyro will kick in it's blinking that's it gyro is activated very nice so on the screen I have the telemetry the, the RX voltage and the antennas the, the signal strength with the 2.4 gigahertz and the 900 megahertz I have got all the telemetry here is really nice and unfortunately the airspeed indicator I, that I installed inside the wing I will remove it because it doesn't work with Jetty and that's a bitty but I will uh, buy the Jetty uh, airspeed indicator and install it later and yeah so I don't have a telemetry from the airspeed uh, yet all right aileron is working flaps that's awesome and flaps up uh, spoilers are not installed yet but the uh, servos are connected and they're working perfectly the rudder so lovely and the elevators very nice and the nose landing gear very nice it is so bright and steering is awesome I added like one second delay it's so cool this rotates around more than 45 degrees which is awesome the taxi light when I retract the gear up turns off and that's so cool and then there is no more and then when the gear is up, the steering servo is deactivated. Amazing, and I'm working on the windows. Hopefully we'll finish them soon. So just to give you a perspective of how small my workshop, that's my door, goes like this. The tail is almost hitting my screen. And that's one wing to the wall. And that's a switch for the gyro. Gyro on, gyro off. Perfect. All right, we're done. Everything is working perfectly. Turn off, yes, and it's off. I love this radio. I love this radio, it's so cool. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, it's been three weeks just working, filming this video for you guys. And I think I will take a day off just at least to shave my beard. <laughs> so the airplane is finally almost done I mean with with all the connections and like the structure itself is done the frame is finished and uh, with all this stuff installed and uh, like and the amount of, of, uh, of work and money I spent on this airplane this will make me now even more nervous to fly it you know it's um, yeah it all comes down to that moment the takeoff moment and uh, yeah but I think that's the joy of the hobby to really do something yourself and, 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 and make it work. And for the livery, I decided to go with the Airbus A350 carbon livery, which is an epic livery. It's so cool, but it is so hard to do. So I will do my best. And you guys also voted for it on YouTube. It was more than 80% agreed. And I, I know that some of you want an airline livery which is it's also cool but I think no one uh, done the carbon livery yet and I think it will look so cool especially that this airplane is made out of carbon fiber so carbon livery will be something special and this airplane will be really special it is special to me because I worked so much on it and I used completely new methods and everything and uh, yeah so the next video will be the livery and I'm so excited to start doing that it will take time but uh, I believe that it would be something very very special so stay tuned for the next video it will take a while because there's so much work involved and I really want to make it perfect and so this might take some time thank you for watching thanks to my patrons for their enormous support they allow me to keep those videos coming and those builds and I really can't thank you enough guys thank you thank you very much thanks for all the love and support and see you in the next video bye bye